all right guys welcome back to the channel we just wrapped up turkey hunting for the day um today's topic though is deer related and we're gonna be talking about mock scrapes uh springtime even though a lot of us have turkey hunting on our mind it's a great time to go ahead and get new mock scrapes put in or if you have a pre-existing scrape go in check that location you know make sure the licking branch isn't broken off or vine missing things of that nature um, with today what we're really going to be discussing is why would you want to use a mock scrape you know the benefits from it and then more or less where should you be placing your mock scrapes on your property to benefit from them so right now we're standing over a uh, pretty old mock scrape this was one i created about four years ago and uh, i've done nothing to it since it's been a really really good spot um, had a lot of big bucks through here got a trail camera just off this thing and we've collected intel over the last four years like we just said and it's been it's been unbelievable the amount of deer that use these you know scrape sites um, a scrape in general you know it's a communication tool for white-tailed deer whether that's a fawn or a doe or you know mature buck or even a younger buck um, they hit these things all year round and that's kind of why I like to focus on them and it's kind of why it doesn't really matter what time of season it is whether it's spring summer you know winter or fall um, there's never a bad time to start making these there's never a bad time to revamp them because deer are using these to communicate all year round and the reason I know that is because I keep cameras up all year round and I keep them over these scrape sites that way I can learn a little bit more of you know when do they use the licking branch when do they use you know the vines or you know when are they actually pulling at the ground you know obviously that's your pre-rut phase rut phase things of that nature but you know it's a learning curve kind of a trial and error so this scrape here is right next to a deer stand location which is going to be another thing we're going to be discussing so when it comes to where you should place your mock scrapes in my opinion anywhere that i'm going to make a mock scrape on my property or enhance you know like a pre-existing scrape that i think is a good one it's going to be somewhere that I can hang a stand, somewhere that I can hunt. Because for me, I don't really care, you know, necessarily how many scrapes there are on the property or how little. I don't really think you're going to lose attractiveness by having too many. I think it's more important to focus on if you want to have, you know, key mock scrapes on transition routes or, you know, near a food source or even, you know, close to bedding. I want to make sure it's in an area that I have a wind I can use, a stand that I can get in and out of. Even if it's only a couple times a year, I don't want to take time making these things in a location that I can't hunt. It doesn't really do me any good. Deer are going to make plenty of scrapes on their own all year round. So mostly what I'm looking for are transition routes and areas that deer tend to go, especially during like that pre-rut phase, to check on does. You know scent checking like downwind or even sometimes upwind side of bedding areas uh, i want to make sure if i'm going to put a mock scrape in that area that it's going to be a spot that i'm going to be able to key in on a big buck so guys when making these i've used vines synthetic vines grape vines licking branches they all work they're all great anything natural i think is the best but as long as the only downfall really to using the branches like this this one's hanging on by a thread uh here pretty soon it's going to get kicked off you can see as well my vine it's almost completely chewed up deer will chew on the you know the licking branches and the vine so at first i thought the synthetic was going to be the way to go kind of hold up maybe not dry rot but honestly grapevine that's your best bet grapevine lasts forever it's really hardy and it doesn't matter if the deer are chewing on it or not. It's going to last a lot longer than buying a synthetic vine. And after all, it's free. So just anytime you're in the woods, you see grapevines, just start cutting them. You know, make little like uh, three, four foot chunks out of them. Um, you know, you can fill the whole bed of your truck up with them. And whenever you need them, take some zip ties or drill a little hole through it. I've tried many different techniques as far as tying them up. But when it comes to mock scrapes, why I really like using them this is such a good communication tool. Deer use these things all year round. You can place them right in front of your deer stand location. You're already picking an area, you know that buck's gonna come. It's also gonna slow that deer down. You know, if he's coming in, a lot of times you only have a handful of seconds, you know, to react. Um, if you're filming a hunt, it's even harder yet because you're trying to get the camera on them and make sure you can get a shot. So it just gives them something that kind of takes their focus away. It allows them to 
you know, focus on that and not so much what's going on in the area just for a short period of time. You know, they're licking branches or, you know, maybe smelling the ground. They're just, they're trying to pick up scent and try to figure out who's there and, you know, what other deer are in the area. So it just gives you, you know, maybe that extra second. And sometimes that's all it takes. So really good communication tool, creates really good sand locations. You know, it's something you can key on you can key in on multiple times throughout the season. It's not going to be just the rut. Um, you can key in on them early season, pre-rut, post-rut. Sometimes over the years, I've even keyed in on them during late season and had pretty good success. You know, a lot of deer still are hitting these things and I'm running cameras all winter. So I know for sure, you know, it's not just a fluke. I'm seeing five, six different bucks, you know, on field edges, five, six, you know, different deer in bedding areas, still hitting those scrapes. Um, you know, especially if you're in a state where you can hunt into January, I've really learned to key in on those doe fawns when they come in like that first six days of January or even the last couple days of December, I've seen that. And it just creates a really good opportunity, a little last minute opportunity to hopefully harvest a mature buck. If you haven't made mock scrapes on your property before going in there and just willy nilly doing it, I highly recommend, like we always talk about, you know, just like in the last couple weeks episodes, is creating the habitat improvement around your deer stand location. It's kind of the same thing with the mock scrapes. You need to know that's a good area before you implement it. Meaning you need to know that you can put a stand there. You need to know what the odds are of a deer coming in that area or traveling in that spot. And then, you know, from there, that's what's gonna create that good quality opportunity to hopefully harvest a mature buck over a scrape. And if not, it's just gonna slow them down it's gonna give you more time for that deer to spend on your property, you know, in daylight. And after all, if you're hunting small acreage like I am, I really need to utilize every square inch of this farm to maximize my results. So guys, make sure to get out there this spring, make some mock scrapes, and uh, good luck in the turkey woods.